Okay, home athletes, uh, happy Monday. Let's get this week started, shall we? We have a longer workout for you today. It, the entire workout is done four times, right? So get an open-ended timer going, three, two, one, get started. Um, the workout starts with a buy-in today, so a buy-in of a one-mile run. So the workout starts with a one-mile run. You get that completed, and then you don't have to run anymore, right? So it's just a buy-in. So get your uh, Google Maps out. If you haven't done this already, map it out. Um, you know, 800 meters down, 800 meters back, or whatever. you got a loop maybe set up in your neighborhood, but one mile. Hopefully, depending on your capacity for running, this takes between, what, 8 and 10 minutes or so? Don't uh, try to beat any records or anything because you do have a uh, you know more work to do when you come back inside. So one mile run at a you know strong but uh, sustainable pace. Then after your one mile run, you want to do uh, three different movements with a descending rep scheme, cycling through the three movements. We have 40 of each movement, 30 of each movement, 20 of each movement. And the last run is going to be 10 of each movement. So 40, 40, 40, 30, 40, 30, 20, 10, 10, and 10. All right, what do you need for these movements and what are these movements? So we need a single dumbbell today, single dumbbell. And our three movements are Russian swings, plank rows, and thrusters. So a good upper pulling, pushing, nice combination of movements. So going through on the list, we have Russian swings with a single dumbbell. So all these sets, the 40, 30, 20, 10, all these sets, you can, these are all um, unilateral movements. They're one-sided movements if you only have the one dumbbell. You can split them between the two sides however you want. I don't mind, you know, you can split each one in half, you can do sets of five, whatever you want to do, I don't mind. But obviously, keep it even between the two sides, right? That should go without saying that. So, um, rest of swings, we're gonna go between the knees, right? We're keeping that shoulder pulled back, right? We don't want that uh, weight of that dumbbell pulling on a loose shoulder, so we're gonna keep that shoulder blade pulled back or down for a safe shoulder. Um, just like regular swings, we're sending those hips back, we're driving those hips forward, we kind of create that momentum and force. We have that one dumbbell, and we're going right up to shoulder level. All right, so again, make sure that shoulder stays nice and stable and retracted into the socket so it's not loose. This makes for a safer shoulder as well as a tighter swing with the dumbbell. And again, all that power, all that momentum comes from the hips and the glutes, right? Send those hips back, drive those hips forward, that makes the kettlebell, or sorry, dumbbell move. So, again, split those evenly between the two sides, left and right hand. Uh, then we got plank rows. So, we did these recently, Renegade rows, we had to do a push-up row row. This is just the row part, right? You're holding a plank position and you're pulling the weight up into the chest. So same thing, you're gonna have one dumbbell. But with these plank rows, you're gonna have one hand flat on the floor, and the other side is gonna be doing rows. I would probably, I mean, it depends on how heavy your dumbbell is. You know, you can do five, 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 or 10, 10, or split it up again, however you want to do it. So get into your plank hold position. Probably make sure there's a little bit of space between the feet, you know, for, for balance-wise. Feet are probably about maybe shoulder width apart. Um, we have one dumbbell, right? So get nice and tight in the middle, and we just pull that dumbbell up into the chest, right? Switching hands as necessary. The one hand's kind of uh, supporting your weight, while the other hand doing the rows. Try to keep the hips nice and straight, you know, don't stick your bottom in the air. Great exercise, works the core, you know, you're working your abs and your glutes and everything else to kind of brace, then you work that upper back to get that pull with the dumbbell. And then finally, thrusters. Same thing, one dumbbell, we're gonna be working one side at a time, break the sets up evenly between the two sides, however you want, looking for that full squat at the bottom, dumbbell, it's rest riding on the shoulder at the back here, going all the way down into a full squat and then punching it up overhead. Really use those legs on the way up, right? When we extend the legs and hips, that kind of launches the weight off the shoulder, and then we finish with the arms. So a lot of legs and hips on the way up, and then a punch up toward the ceiling, making sure, as always, to get that full extension. You really want to make sure that shoulder gets fully open up all the way, ideally with the armpit facing straight ahead, and then locking that elbow out overhead, right? Nice straight arm. Basically, push that dumbbell up as high as you can. We don't want to be kind of hanging out in that sort of not fully extended version. We want to be able to maintain that easy, uh, easy to get to position of full extension overhead. All right, that's enough talking. Go get after it, guys. 
Have a great workout. So again, this entire workout is done for time, right? Three, two, one, go. Do your run. Do your rounds. It's going to be a good workout. You're going to love it. All right. Talk to you tomorrow.